been forever <laughs> um so we're we just we're gonna uh cheat a little bit we're doing another behind the trail behind the um projector but we didn't watch the movie we have we were talking about on the you're without a santa claus video a, a little bit about jim carrey's the grinch and we had a lot of memories and we kind of started watching some of the clips again and we thought we could do an episode on this oh yeah um Kyle, you and I kind of have slightly different opinions <laughs> on Jim Carrey's The Grinch, where you really, really like it. I have a love-hate relationship with it. Let's start with you. What, how, are you <laughs> how are you introduced to Jim Carrey's The Grinch, and what do you have your thoughts kind of changed over the years? Or? I'm trying to remember if I saw it in theaters or not. Um, the farthest memory I can go is I just remember watching it as a kid and I don't remember if it was at home or in a movie theater. I believe I did see it in a movie theater because back then when I was a kid uh, there's this weird random tradition I had with my grandma because uh, and like all the other grandkids where she would take us to that movie, what's that movie theater in LA? That big uh, movie? The, is it the El Capitan? The, uh, El Capitan Theater, yeah. So we, during Christmas time we'd go down there and we'd just watch whatever movie she picked for us. Uh, ugh, and sometimes I like you know, she picked it, and you know, 50-50. Yeah. Pretty sure it's all the Grinch there, which is hilarious. I love this movie because it is chaotic, and it is just... Uh, it, it's different from every other Christmas movie. It's really well made. Uh, like, attention to detail. Uh, they put in a lot of effort in uh, like the costumes, the sets. The makeup for Jim Carrey. Oh, yeah. Um, it's gorgeous, uh, but yeah, it is chaotic. It is, it's just, it's chaos, and I love it. I love that. I saw it in the theaters when it came out. Um, I remember seeing the trailer for it in front of, I think, Fantasia 2000. Ooh. Um, and I was obsessed with it, because I love Dr. Seuss, and I especially love The Grinch. I love the Boris Karloff cartoon, I love the book by Dr. Seuss himself. The animated uh, yeah, movie? The, the animated one. And I was so excited for this movie, and I went to go see it and I loved it. I was even the Grinch for Halloween. So, yeah, I, was, yeah. so I was really prepared. As I've grown older, I've had a mixed relationship with the movie <laughs> where a part of me is like, I think this is not appropriate for kids. I get that you need the adult humor, and we'll get to some of the adult humor in this. <laughs> but you just explained one of them to me before mm -hmm. we started filming. And, um,. I don't know how Dr. Seuss would have appreciated this personally. Like, I know his widow, his not his wife, hated the Cat in the Hat movie, and they, they said there was no live-action movies to be made because of that. <laughs> <laughs> but I agree with you on the sets look fantastic. We've we both seen them on the Universal Studios Backlot mm -hmm. tour. Um, Jim Carrey's makeup looks incredible. I, I can't imagine the... The claustrophobia he probably went through get going into that makeup like he talked about how he had to meditate to just feel comfortable yeah being in it and he just uh, he looks he blends perfectly into that that makeup and that yep. character and say what you will about if the character is a little different it's still a great character like um a really over-the-top flamboyant grump and i i do like it um I think sort of it might miss the message a little bit about the oh, who's all the who's should already know. People have talked about this before. The who should probably know what Christmas is all about already. But you need that dramatic. Um, you need that arc in a, a live act, in a longer movie probably. Mm -hmm. uh, that kind of goes with. I'm sorry, I'm talking too. Much. No, that's, that's what I feel about a lot of the Doctor Seuss things. Or sometimes I miss the point, like the Lorax in particular. Oh God! Where the Lorax, Lorax is like, save the trees, but then they say, oh no, it's not man's problem. It's corporate. 
America's problem, and they're like, oh, let's also promote the movie by by having car ads, Lorax friendly. Oh, um, yeah. Which and, and Jim Carrey ironically did another Dr. Seuss movie. He did, uh, which also involved the Who's, which was Horton Here's a Who. Yeah, I haven't seen that movie in years. <coughs> yeah, so I'll bet cold. What what were some of your favorite jokes from? There, there. I will say, there. Jim Carrey's humor shines through in this. One thing I will say uh, before that question, the one thing because I'm gonna forget yeah. is uh, because you mentioned about the message, and I yeah I get yeah it's I believe yeah I'm a thousand percent behind you on that one because yeah in the original story they already knew the importance of Christmas, um, so they didn't have to go through any of that. But I think that's kind of why I like this movie a little bit more. Oh, really? It's because the one thing this movie always does is it always takes everything to the next level. So it's like, if there's going to be a Grinch and he's going to be uh, played by Jim Carrey, he's going to be insane and do all these weird things. Just throughout the movie, he, like his mannerisms, his like he's always like dramatic and he's super petty. So if we're going to make the Who's uh, a little, um, what's the word? Conceited, maybe? It's like they're materialistic. Oh yeah, okay. They went full throttle on it. And like the scene where they're like... Um, they're all they're all walking around with all their gifts, or the 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 dad is in the mail room and he's like putting everyone's oh, Christmas yeah, gift, like, and they're trying to send it, and then there's and then there's like the conveyor belt that's like pushing all the gifts, and it, every time it stamps them, it just crushes it. <laughs> it. It's just so dramatic and extra. Everything is extremely over the top, and uh, I I will say that there is a charm to that, which I get. I I can totally understand how that would annoy people. Yeah. Like, yeah. There's a lot of. Uh, weird like Dutch angles and kind of like fast zooms on extreme zoom close-ups on people's faces. Um, this is a Ron Howard film, so Clint Howard is his brother. He's in the movie as, yeah. as the mayor's advisor. Yeah. <laughs> and Clint Howard is pretty much an elf. I think all of Ron Howard's. I know he was in Solo because Ron Howard kind saved Solo. I don't know what the appropriate term for what that's you classify for, Solo. That's as. for another time. That's for another time. But Clint Howard's in that, but I, I, as a kid, I'm like, I, I don't know who Clint Howard is, but now you're like, oh, there's Clint Howard's cameo. Yep. I also, if we're talking about, there are some tributes to Dr. Susan here, like, um, I do like that it's in a snowflake, kind of like Horton Hears a Who, Whoville is in a dust. Yeah, is it dust? that's right. I like to think that this is a completely different mayor than the mayor of Horton Hears a Who, and this one just got, um, ousted eventually and then you got the Steve Carell mayor coming in later. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, you were asking me. Oh yeah, what is one of your, there's a lot of Jim Carrey, great Jim Carrey moments. Oh, that, that so we, many. Because we, um, we acknowledge why the older people probably don't like this, but as 90, what, would, what are we, millennials? Yes, <laughs> so at the time of this movie, we both would have been, I think I, about, mm, it was about, about seven. Yeah. Probably around seven years old, seven, eight years old, and then by the time reruns were coming on, we were obviously about 10 to 12, and that is just peak age for this movie. It is uh, so good. That's why. That's another reason why I'm super biased about this movie. Yeah, we, we I, did grow up with this. Yeah, that, but uh, you're asking what my favorite Grinch. Grinch, what's your favorite Grinch moment in this? <laughs> oh, there's so many. Uh, I think... Ooh. Do you want me to tell you mine in the meantime? Yes. I do first. love the one where he's going through his schedule. It's when Cindy Lou Who <laughs> tells him to, he's the holiday cheermeister and he's like, even if I want to go, my schedule went loud. He's like, four o'clock, wallow in self pity, 5 30, stare into the abyss. I have this whole memorized and he just. Um, I love my favorite part of the thing is like, dinner with me, I can't cancel that again. <laughs> I think that's my favorite Grinch moment. I, but I also do love the moment when he. He's trying to figure out what to wear, and he takes the sheet off the table. And I think that was, I think he did that but for real. He actually managed to do it without knocking anything down. Mm -hmm. And then he just runs back and knocks everything down. Yep, yep. I love that. That's such a, that would be a Grinch thing to do, and that's also a Jim Carrey yes. thing to do. Because the Grinch is just so, like, he's just a big man baby. Yeah, he is. And they definitely emphasize that in this movie, which I love. But I'd say... My favorite Grinch moment would be when he steals the car. Oh, when he's car. yeah, when he's trying to when he's trying to get out of town after the uh, I forgot what that festival. The hubilation. The hubilation, and he's wearing the overall. <coughs> Sorry. And he he's trying to call a taxi, and they always ignore him, and he's like, "It's because I'm green, isn't it?" 
I love that part, but my favorite part is there's like tiny, they always, because it's in all the Dog Shoes books, there's all the Whovilles come in like different sizes, yeah. there's like small little ones, and they're in a little like RC car, and he just like hijacks it from them, and he's driving around, and he like loses control, crashes into like a... a lamp, it was like a lamppost. Yeah, a lamppost, and it's leaking out fuel, and it's gonna blow, and he's like, it's gonna blow, and he's like slow running. Weird, totally not part of the story. It is just its own thing, and it just like explodes. And the the part that cracks me up is the zoom out. It just like shows the town, and you just see a big fireball. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> it's just what was that? I fun fact: I had an RC toy of the Grinch on that car, and I used Ooh, to play that all the time. That's cool. Which also kind of defeats the purpose of the movie. They had merchandise for this movie. It's like merchandising or buying stuff for the holidays is bad. But we're gonna merchandise the heck out of it. Heck yeah. I think there might have, I know there was a Cat in the Hat video game. There might have been a Grinch video game. I don't know. I would be down to play it. Um, so would I. Um, you get to steal presents for points. Um, I think there was a there's also a lot of adult humor in this, which being the um I do like Dr. Seuss, so I'm not particularly a fan of that in here, but I understand why it's funny. Mm -hmm. I, I think it would, it would make me laugh more if it was another movie, but you were explaining the key joke. Do you want to explain that? Yeah, so uh, before I explain that, I I like uh, kid mo kid movies and TV shows that have like a little bit of adult humor, okay. but I like it when it's subtle, like you don't pick up on it first, and then years later you're watching it and you go, oh my god, that's what that was? Which is kind of the key joke. Yeah, that's that's this movie. A lot of the adult, some, most of the adult jokes, uh, you don't realize it when you're first watching it, and then later on you're like, <laughs> One of them that's hilarious is when the Grinch is being, he's, when he's a baby and he's in the basket and they show where all the babies come from in, uh, in their town and he's floating in and he gets caught on the branch <laughs> outside of the old lady's houses that he ends up, that ends up taking him in as his parents and in the window they're having like a giant Christmas party and <laughs> they, 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 sh they show that all the guests are putting their keys in a bowl and it's it's hinting at that they're having a key party, which if you don't know what that is, you should look it up. Yeah, uh, I don't think we should discuss it. <laughs> yeah, look look that up if you want. It's up to your discretion. Uh, but that's hilarious that they say that because it just makes the old ladies even funnier. To add on to that scene. <laughs> oh, the part. Are you going to talk about the part where the, they get the, the baby delivered? And, yes. Yes, yes. Where the, that's another the, one. the guy is like, honey, our baby's here. And he looks at the baby. He's like, looks kind of like your boss. <laughs> I, I totally... I think I remember that joke, and I got it when I was a kid. I was like, oh, that's hilarious. Like, I, it was like one of those, I was like, oh. When I was a kid, I thought that was like, oh, we got the wrong baby. But that was just naive Jack thinking, oh, there, there wouldn't be someone having an affair or anything like that. That's, I don't know why I just love that about this movie. There was an animated remake that came out a few years ago. I have not seen it. With, uh... Benedict Cumberbatch. Yes. Where it's, I thought the first trailer was good. I liked the the cover for the You're a Mean One, Mr. Grinch. I liked, um... I don't even remember what I liked. But then it went downhill quickly with him vomiting up the cucumber that he took out of the store or whatever. And I'm like, oh, this is an Illumination. I'm not a, the biggest Illumination fan. I like the first Despicable Me fine. I don't mind their the animation style. No, I mean, not the it's, style. Yeah, just, the, the style's clean, it's just, yeah. The, really humor is, the humor is not the best. Hey, you know what? Uh, there's gonna be people probably like us 20 to 30 years later, and they're gonna say what we're saying about the Grinch. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but they did make a Grinch movie. And I haven't seen, have you seen that, or no? No, I've only seen clips in the trailer. I wasn't a big fan of the, the trailer when it came out. I was like, oh, come on. Man. Yeah, and I think it was too soon. I'm not sure if it was too soon. Make another Grinch movie, but or was it just not really needed? The Grinch yeah. is not really a franchise kind of thing. Yeah, you, there's no, you can't do a sequel about it unless you really need to, but no one will care. There was um, an animated, pre I'm not sure if it was a prequel or a sequel. I remember watching it was like the Grinch. It was a Halloween special. I don't remember what it was called. I'm gonna put the title up here when I find out. <laughs> but it was something about Grinch Night or something. Where the Grinch comes out from his mouth to wreak havoc, and a kid confronts him, and I think at the end, he takes Max away from the Grinch. Because I'm always like, how did the Grinch get Max? Well, actually, and it's not important, but yeah, why does Max stay with the Grinch? Um, there is another joke that I'm surprised they did this. It's when Jim Carrey's Grinch, well, duh, is um, 
go invading the mayor's house. And the mayor is. Oh. You, do you want to explain this? <laughs> yeah, you can. You can explain it. The mayor is like dreaming about kissing Martha Mayhew, who is the, the is part of a love triangle between the mayor, the Grinch, and the the lady Martha Mayhew. And so the Grinch pretends to be here through voice. The the mayor is sleeping. He picks up Max and he puts places the behind. The mayor kisses the dog's butt. <laughs> And the dog is like, rrr, 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 just scoots around. Yeah, that joke's a little cheesy, but it's, it's a little cheesy, but I don't know why. I think maybe it's also because I just I don't. I see the Grinch and Jim Carrey is just melded into one, and I don't know why. I just seeing Jim Carrey what? do a ridiculous thing. That's kind of the thing about Jim Carrey. Um, he's really good at playing Jim Carrey, and it's not discredits Jim Carrey's comedic abilities. Just when you see. I'm not even gonna say that. I was gonna say when you see one Jim Carrey performance, you've seen them all, but that's not true. Jim Carrey's really good at drama and comedy. Like Truman Show is a good mix, I think. Mm -hmm. I think yes. we watched that in high school, actually. Yeah, I think yeah, I think we watched it together. Another one that I also recommend is Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. It's my second favorite film of all time. It's really depressing for a Jim Carrey film. The more we talk about this, it makes me want to watch Jim Carrey's The Grinch again, maybe get a second chance. Or uh, again, I don't, I don't hate Jim Carrey's The Grinch. I just have a weird relationship with it because I'm conflicted about how I feel, how a Dr. Seuss would feel about it. But I also enjoy it from my nostalgic childhood. I think what's made me enjoy it even more is the past few years. I've also watched this movie with a lot of my friends, and we also turned this movie into a drinking game. <laughs> And, that, and that's just like another fun way to enjoy this movie because you turn it into like a huge social event. What are the rules of this drinking game? God, I don't remember. <laughs> it's, it's like to. Yeah, I don't, I don't remember. We just, uh, I, we looked it up online. There's like a, there's somebody online that made the, their own rules and we used whatever template it was. I, I'm not, I don't remember what it is, but at the end of the night, you just end up just drinking whatever you want and you just devolve. It's a Jim Carrey. Yeah, but it's so funny. I love it. It's such a great movie. Well, I, it, it is something. We play it in the break room at work all the time, well, at least during the Christmas season. And I'm probably gonna have to add it to the collection. I don't, I'll probably add it. I won't put it in the bad movie section. <laughs> I will put it in the Christmas section, but oh, yeah. I, I probably will add it. But is there anything else you kind of want to add oh. to what you thought and think of the Jim Carrey Grinch? One thing I liked is, uh, I liked how the O's, um, they stuck to as much as they could with like him going through town and stealing everything. Oh yeah, it was that, that was really cool. I liked that uh, that they tried to stick to the the cartoon. Yeah, as much as they could. Like they built all the weird contraptions. Oh, that's the one thing I like. I like how like they show how the Grinch is like an inventor, mm -hmm. and he just I, I, I really like that because it's like, well, how did he make all this stuff to like steal it? And, they like, kind of hinted that when he's a kid when he's making the angel for Marvel. Yeah, Marvel. yeah, he, yeah. And I, I love that. I love that he's like an inventor, and then he builds all these weird contraptions, and just it's just like him. It's weird and awkward, and it, sometimes it doesn't work, and it does, and that's funny. I, I love that part too. And while it's not the best cover. For the song, I kind of do like the version of "You're Me, One, Mr. Grinch." Yeah, it's not the best. Again, it's not the best cover for it, but yeah, it's a yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. I, I like that one. Yeah. Was there anything you, before we end? Was there anything you didn't like about it? Or was it uh, hmm, I don't know. I'm a pretty big fan. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I just just thought I'd ask that question. No, so no, we it's have fine. someone who's kind of in the middle. We have someone who's f completely for. So um, I think that's our second Christmas video. Uh, we'll try and have we'll, we will have Kyle back on the show, um, but thank you again for having me. Yeah, for, of course for, for being here, Kyle. Yeah, um, love coming by. All right, we'll see you guys later. Have a merry Christmas. Merry and Christmas and a happy life day. <laughs> 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 life day.